How is it possible that some of the most religious people in the world end up with so much heat? It's as if the world has little hate that they needed to add. I mean, think about it. Think of the hatred in politics. Yes, think of all the countries fighting each other and wars. You know, you would think that these people who are religious, who are very religious, would not have hate, would actually try to stop the hatred. But no, go down through history, 1,000 years ago, in the Crusades, Christians killed a billion Muslims to take over Jerusalem. In the 1500, you've got the Spanish Inquisition and persecuting Muslims and Jews and other heretics. And then in recent history, ISIS and Al-Qaeda and the Muslim terrorists. My friend, why is it like this? Jesus talked about it in our gospel. He talked to the religious leaders of his time and he was saying, you killed the prophets. And yes, we read the gospels. They will end up killing Jesus. The most religious people of his time brought him to court to crucify him. Why? Ah, because there is a huge difference between religious maturity and spiritual maturity. There is. And unless you understand that, you, you can end up not having the discernment to see whether you have hatred in your heart and you end up doing violence in the name of God, hurting people and harming people in the name of God. You see it all over the place. Maybe not killing people exactly, but because of religious doctrine, you know, you end up not loving the way God wants us to love. What's the difference between religious maturity and spiritual maturity? Religious maturity is knowing the doctrines, knowing the teachings of your faith, practicing fastidiously the rituals and the ceremonies and the requirements. What is spiritual maturity? Spiritual maturity for us Christians is acting like Jesus, loving like Jesus, being humble like Jesus, giving yourself like Jesus to other people. And it was this Jesus who taught us, Father, forgive me for my sins so that in the same way I can forgive other people. My friend, let us come before him and ask for God's mercy. Ask for God's power. Ask for God's grace so that we will more and more live like Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity that I can come into your presence to seek for your transformative power. I do not just want to be religiously mature. Yes, I want that too. But more than that, I want to be spiritually mature. I want you to make me more and more like Jesus every day. Lord, if there is any pride or insecurity or hatred in me, I pray that you would drain it out by the power of your Spirit. And thank you that you're doing this right now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I'd like to invite you to come and be part of a spiritual community. I'll tell you why. When you have other people that you grow together in the Lord, it will be a lot easier to get that discernment going so that you grow not only in maturity in the religious area, but also in the spiritual area. You know, grow together. Join me. If you do not have a spiritual community, go to feast.ph. Find out if there is a feast in your location. And if there is absolutely none, you can actually start a small feast in your home, in your office, where you are. Go to feastlight.com. 
and find out more how you can do it. God bless you and I'll see you tomorrow.